All right, so I wanted to come to y'all today just as Tom Peace, right? As a normal motherfucker, just an average everyday dude, as I usually always do, but I wanted y'all to be able to see the expressions, the mentalities, and everything else that really goes with it, and I wanted to tell y'all a story about what happened to me this morning, right? So, I was laying in bed, and I just woke up, and I seen I had, like, missed calls and messages from work. And my job, as of the past couple of weeks, have been screaming about how, like, if you stand here and get uh, hours of service violation, you're going to be suspended. I got you. It's cool. Whatever. And they said in the messages that I had received an hours of service violation and a personal conveyance violation, which is whatever. I don't really care because it wasn't like a violation of the law. That's the big difference. It was a violation of company policy, right? It's personal conveyance is when you can use your truck to like, you know, if you're on your break or you're done working, whatever, you can go to the store, you can go to the restaurant, do whatever you need to do. You can get, you know, I mean, anything you need to go get, go, go to find a decent bathroom, that type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Get a shower, whatever. Go to the doctor, an emergency. You know what I mean? You can personal convey this so that you're not stuck in that truck sitting on the side of the road somewhere. And that's cool. And with the personal convey thing, I was like, all right, it's your company policy. You know what I mean? That we only use personal convey to get off of a customer's property, to move when the police tell us to move. Right? And so basically what you're saying is, is that it's only there to promote your business. Gotcha. Immediately aware of what the situation is. It ain't for us. It ain't to make the driver's lives any easier. It's to stand here and make y'all more money is what the situation is which is fine that's the way you want to handle things and so i sent him a message and i sent him pictures of what the rules were and the laws were you know what i mean because like as a driver you have to know this type of stuff you know what i mean you have to be an expert in fucking the law about what you can and cannot do with a truck right because if you're in violation of law it doesn't matter whether or not you know it you know what i mean like yo you they expect you just to know <laughs> right because ultimately your own master on the road so with that being said I sent him a message I said let me know if I'm suspended for a day I can get my kids for an extra day this weekend It'd be nice and he writes back to me or he calls me immediately calls me after I'd already called him he said he was busy in a fucking meeting or whatever he calls me and he goes, what type of arrogant stuff are you on? Let me know if you're suspended so you can get an extra day with your kids. Uh, yeah, let me plan out my weekend. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's like you're not worried about being suspended. I was like, yo, this ain't the first time I've ever been suspended in case, you know what I mean? You thought differently. Like, it doesn't scare me none. Like, I don't know what you want me to tell you. So... I was standing here and I'm trying to talk to this dude and a reminder of the Hannibal Burris where he said he got caught jaywalking, right? The police yelled, hey, you're jaywalking. He's like, sorry, right? We're done here, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, because like, I don't like it's not a real thing. And he wanted me to feel some sort of kind of way about things. And he was like, oh, you're not upset about this? You're not, you know, you're not taking this seriously? I'm like, no, not really. You know what I mean? Like, yo, whatever. This is business. You know what I mean? I'm not going to take it personally if I get suspended for a day. I miss a day's pay. What's that, like 150 bucks? You know what I mean? I make 1200 a week, bro. Like, you're not killing me. You know what I mean? And, like, honestly, seeing my kids is more important. He's like, you, you. You're not taking this seriously enough. You're being flippant. Use the word flippant, which is hilarious. 
And I said, how about this? How about when I eat my steak tonight, I'll feel depressed when I eat it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like. And he calls me back and he goes, and I go, am I suspended? He goes, you can go clean out your truck. You're fired. All right. <coughs> all right. <laughs> that's right. You're down to the point where he's just like, all right, all right. Okay. That's how, that's how we're going to play this one. That's how we're going to play this one. I'm with your ideology. You know what I mean? And so it puts me in a different mode now. Because I went from, I'm going to have a three-day weekend to my kids. And now I'm going to have like a week to do whatever I feel it is I want to do. And giving me a week is giving me a long time to figure some shit out. Because I could file for unemployment, collect two grand a month. Spring's coming, fishing, trout, catfish. Actually, fuck trout. It's communist fish. Or I can stand here and I can go get another job, get back to grinding again, keep my child support paid, all the bullshit. Unemployment will pay my child support as well. So as a man, you have purpose, right? And this is really the crux of this issue is, you know, I mean, I'm kind of lost at the moment as to what I want to do with my life because I'm not happy with the materialistic, I'm not happy having things like I like fast cars and trucks, you know, big wheels and all that bullshit. And that's cool. Right. But it doesn't fulfill me inside. Like it doesn't make me truly happy as a man. And. This YouTube thing, you know, I mean, recently hasn't been really fulfilling me as a man anymore like it was. And I no longer have the family that gave me the purpose to keep banging on as I used to have. And that's kind of something that I wanted to bring up with y'all, right? Like, post Red Pill, post all the bullshit, right? Like, once you get past... You know what I'm saying? Those five stages of grief and whatnot, right? You know what I mean? Like, you know, when you go through all this shit, like, this is the uh, five stages of grief by Elizabeth Cooper Ross. And for almost any part of your life, you'll go through this if you have a major change or something taken away from you. Whether it's, you know what I mean, you being divorced and having a family or, you know, and like, you know, going through all that shit or whether it's somebody dying or whether it's a changing of careers. And I mean, like, you kind of have to go through all of these things, right? You go through denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance, right? And after you get done with that, right? After you get done going through these steps, and you're no longer angry, you're no longer depressed, you're no longer, like, trying to get anything back, you're just there. And you accept everything. Like everything is what everything is. Like you know just. That's what it is. You kind of got to rebuild yourself as a human being. And like give yourself new purpose. Like I tried to start a new family. And it didn't work out. And. So. Then I tried the materialistic. And that didn't work out. Tried taking care of family. And that didn't work out. And I'm looking at my life and wondering what my purpose is. Like, what am I supposed to do? I'm out here playing the stock market. I'm killing it, making money. I got this YouTube thing where, you know, I mean, I bring y'all education and mentalities and new paradigms about things. And I'm learning. I'm growing as an individual, which isn't positive for anybody around me in my relationships. Because the more you learn, the further isolated you are away from the individuals around you. Because they're not learning with you. You can't, you can't drag normal people into the mentalities that you're chasing, right? When you're, when you're standing here chasing after your monster, your whale, you know, when you're, when you're captaining your boat, you know what I'm saying? 
and you trying to kill that white whale, you don't bring your homies with you. You'd love to. But they got their own whale that they're trying to kill. And so you find yourself alone and by yourself. And the voices in the darkness on places like Discord is where you find solace for your life. And having the ability to have conversation with like-minded individuals is important. And people who are going through the same thing that you are. And I'm grateful for that. But the learning will drag you further away from normalcy in your life and normal shit. Like, cause you can't be a normal dude who cares about shoes and the NFL and all the bullshit anymore. Like, you can still give a shit about the NFL and your team. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you can still be a dude. And I, I, I like that. You know what I mean? I still like being able to go into the bar and sit and watching the game with other men. You know what I mean? Because like, you need that companionship. You know, I still like watching the Super Bowl, you know what I'm saying, with the fam and sitting here having a conversation with them. But the further I get away from the norms of what individuals are doing, like I don't smoke weed, right? I don't drink heavily anymore. I don't really do any of the stuff that I used to do. You start learning about principles. You know what I mean? Understanding things. And you start understanding stuff that other individuals aren't able to understand because you're able to remove yourself from the society as a whole. You're able to remove yourself from the culture. And with an individual like me where I think culture and heritage is utmost, you know, because you have to have something to ground you in this world that's going to drag you in a different direction. It's a strange thing to sit here and deal with normal people. Right, like, I was telling individuals about this shit today, and they're like, what a fucking asshole, and I was like, he's doing what he's supposed to do, that's his job, you know what I mean, like, yo, when you live in a cookie cutter world, you gotta cut off the excess, you can't keep the extra parts, and I'm extra parts, because I know that I'm in high demand for my job field, and I know my value, my worth, and I just don't give a fuck. You know, like, I flunked recess because I don't play. <laughs> so, when it really comes down to it, and you're looking at it as a whole, what do you do to rebuild yourself? And, you know, like, we fall into these things where we fight against politics and all the bullshit, Right? And I was having a conversation with Excel last night about this. Not about this subject, but in general about like how we got here. And even the most rational men like Excel is super rational. He's way more, way more intelligent than me, smarter than I am. By, by a far measure, the guy's way smarter than I am. And even he falls prey to the mentality of like, this is all planned. And... I often find that when people say things are planned, it's usually just natural events that led up to it. And people don't want to accept those natural events. Like, as smart monkeys, and this is the other half of this too, is I had a conversation with a dude who said, you know, we're not, you know, evolution is bullshit, da 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 He started talking about logos. And I was like, I was like, I smacked him in the head with that nonsense. It's like, dude, look, stop trying to, like, steal some shit from 800 years, of, you know, I mean, fucking 800 BC in a society that isn't yours to begin with, where they worshiped fucking 75 different gods, you know what I mean, to explain, you know what I mean, your God and your religion today. Like, no, no. You can't do that. You know, I mean, don't tell me logos because that's magic. We all know magic's bullshit. I understand there's some miracles left. I understand there's still some things that science hasn't touched. Some parts of life that you feel rather than understand. You know, like when you hold your child for the first time, you know what I'm saying? You're sitting there and you're looking at your baby and you go, oh, man, that's that's my little girl, you know, or that's my little boy, whatever. Right. And you hold him. You hold I have my fucking youngest son for the first time sitting there looking at him. Right. And I see his little eyes squinting up me and he kind of his little fucking fingers and his little toes and, you know, make sure his fucking dick's there and shit. 
right? And you feel this immense responsibility. But it's a beautiful thing. It's like a part of you is born at that moment. And you can rationalize it away. And rationalize what it is. But ultimately, it's extremely instinctual. It's built into you. At the very bottom of the pit of who you are. And you realize that this individual didn't ask to be here. And so you should do your best to make sure that their time here is as pleasant as possible. And that they should understand that they're loved and they're wanted. And I mean, and never turn them away. Teach them discipline, give them the skills to conquer what it is you brought them into. And to do your name proud later on. That's, that's kind of your job as a parent. So, I guess... What I'm saying is, is that as a father, these things are inherently in you, in your nature, as a man, right? This purpose is drive. And I think we've destroyed that over the years. Because in our society as a whole, your purpose as a man is to die. And that's fine. Your job is to go to war and die. And that's the reason you had the right to vote. It's the reason you had the right to make these decisions. That's why women shouldn't. But once we had the ability to have nuclear weapons, it changes things. Because now you can destroy a city at the instant. Win a war with no boots on the ground. You don't even need us. Hell, man. Elon Musk today was talking to a bunch of uh, Air Force pilots and he said the day of the fighter jet is over. It's over. We got drones, man. We got dudes with joysticks. I don't got to worry about G's and how much force they can take and whether or not their brain can react quick enough. And they have the same instincts. You know, because they're still human. And they'll push that plane past the limits the same as a regular pilot would. The day of the fighter pilot's over. We've taken away men's need for war. Men's need in war. And in doing so, we've destroyed and cheapened manhood. That's why these individuals, they have this gender fluidity thing. Where they, females will say they use manhood. Or dudes say they use manhood at a point where they're looking at the they're looking at a situation where they got to negotiate or they got to take strength they got to take a a stronger stance against things and they use that to really be a man for that moment they use manhood to conquer that moment then they move on they become females when they need to they become neutral when they need to they have a mix of both from time to time we've cheapened manhood Cheapened who we are. Cheapened what it means to be a man. Why? Because we're smart monkeys. Simple. We've taken away the need for us. We've taken away the need for who we are. We've taken away the need for what we do. You wonder why male disposability is at an all-time high? That's the reality of it. All the things that you hope as, you know, an intellectual will rescue you. All these innovations and blah, blah, blah. All these inventions, the machinery and the technoc technocracy. It's ultimately a demise. It's not Marxism. It's not any of the bullshit. Marxism grew like mushrooms and cow shit. That's the reality of it. Marxism grew like mushrooms and cow shit. Like bacteria in a warm environment. In a warm host that had a place that could take hold. It had nothing to do with our downfall. It's just a bacteria. It's just a virus that took over because motherfuckers wasn't washing their hands. We traded comfort for freedom. 
That's the reality. You know, when you destroy the woman's place in the home with the washing machine and refrigerator and dishwasher and all these things. She went to work. It was the Industrial Revolution that brought us feminism. It wasn't Marxism or some nonsense. It's a natural evolution of things. Things were always going to be this way. Because we're too smart for our own good. You don't realize what technology does to you. It's not capitalism. It's not communism. Communism's garbage. But it's neither one of those things. But the good news is, is that there's a virus that may save the day right now. This coronavirus may run through the population and cut out the boomers. Cut out some of the rot. Destroy the rough edges. Allow for wealth to be actually properly dispersed. Not to the government, but to their heirs. And move down. And hopefully, maybe, just maybe, we'll learn that you're supposed to love your family. And they're supposed to take care of you when you're old. And for that, you're supposed to pass your wealth to them. So that they can have a better life and start over and begin anew. Fuck retirement. You should go move in with your kids. And go fishing every day. Take your grandkids out and teach them what you know. That should be the way it works. But it probably won't. So, back to purpose. What shall be my purpose? I don't know. I know I'm going to get some pussy. And I'm probably going to go fishing. I'm going to spend some time on my babies. And on the other side of that, I'll figure all the bullshit out. Figure out what moves I'm going to make. And possibly rediscover my purpose as a whole. Maybe I'll chase down a river monster. Be what it is. Anyway, man, this is Tom Peace, P. Noid News, man. Make sure you check out my Anchor podcast. I'm going to put this up over there. You know what I mean? It's a beautiful little site over there. It's great. Um, I'll throw the link in the description. Um, other than that, you know the deal. Peace be like one. Make sure you share this out. I'll at y'all motherfuckers. Later.